Hello, good evening. Just getting my computer all organised and sorted out. So I can see your comments, hopefully. Yeah, there we are. Hi, Andrean. Hiya. Just... Hi, Philippa. Hi, Brian. As you can hear, um, I've had issues with my voice since uh, Saturday, but um, I think we're getting there now. I've I've actually got more voice today than I've had in a long time <laughs> since Saturday. But on, I went out on Saturday night and by Sunday morning I sounded like a mixture of Madge from Neighbours and Bonnie Tyler. I must have partied too hard. So I've been um, steaming my throat and all kinds of stuff to try and get some voice for tonight so it is a little dust, uh, huskier than it normally is but there you go I think I'm rocking it <laughs> but I wanted to do the live I didn't want to I didn't want to not do it so if I get a bit hoarse by the end of it and you can't understand me I'll answer your questions at the end so it's all good it's all good okay hi Julie so I'll, I'll make a start, um, so I've got a, a group of stuff in front of me, I'll move it down a bit, I can see on the computer I'm a bit high up, there we are, that, uh, this is what I'll be using tonight, okay, so I'm going to be using the, um, some of the frames, actually I cut all of the frames, you know the, the, the dinky dies as well as the bigger frames, the ones that I've got the two lines on so that they did um, frames. I've cut all of them out. I'm not sure which one. I think there was four in all. So I'm going to be using them. Um, I'm going to be using Julie's background free stencil. Yeah, I've got some honey. Um, I've got honey and I've got a spray and stuff that my daughter uses because she's a singer. So sometimes she gets a little bit hoarse and she brought it all around for me. God love her. Um, so I've been using that. I must say the steamer that she's got is really good. So it is helping. I mean, it's not sore. It just doesn't sound good. So I'm using the um, new stamps by Julie, um, the hand-picked florals, I'm using them. Um, I'm using the banner dies and I always stamp a load of them out and pop them in just for a quick card when I need one, when I first get them. So I'm using them and I'm using the banner stamps or maybe I'll use... Um, the foilables, I used one of those out of there for a change, just ink it up and use it. So you've got the choice of both there. So whichever one of them you've got, you can use. So, right, I'm going to move them away now. So we're going to do an 8x8 card. Hi, Pass. Hi, Sue. Hi, Leslie. Jägermeister. Uh, I think that might have been what got me in this trouble in the first place, Brian. Um, so it's an 8x8 card and for that card we need two panels. We need one which I've done to seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters and the other one, the one that's going to go on top of it is uh, seven by seven. Okay, so we're going to work on these two. Now this is not just ordinary card, this is, um, hi Leslie, this is... Um, De La Rowney Mixed Media Cards. You can use watercolour cards, you can use whatever colour cards, whatever type of card you've got. Okay. Um, I've also got a lot of stuff prepped here. Um, just to save you all hours of your time tonight. So I've got all the hand-picked florals cut out. Brian requested pink. So pink it is. I'm using pink Distress Inks. I do have the Picked Raspberry and the Kiss Flamingo. And I've also got... Um, a 
studio like dye ink in black only because that's the juiciest one that I've got so far so I need that. I've got some glossy accents, I've got a distress tool, there's my frames cut out there, you can see them there. I've got various little bits of gems and uh, some lace um, and I've got one of the foilables as well and I've also I've also got this, I might use it, I didn't on the last one, but it's uh, it's one of those seals, you know, a wax seal. just happened to be pink, so I grabbed it out just in case. And I've got foilables out there, so that must have been the plan. Um, I've also got some texture paste, modelling paste. I want to talk about that when I get to it. But, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be using. So for now, oh, and, and a standard piece of acetate with uh, a bit of pink on, so I can see it on the desk. Okay, so what I want to do first is put some colour on these and um, as Brian requested, pink, pink it is. So we're going to start with a bit of Kiss Flamingo, absolutely no um, skill required here. So we're just going to use the acetate, I'll put it on there so you can see what I'm putting down. And I'm just going to put, this is quite juicy, this is quite a new one, so I'm just going to put some on. Now, you'll need a spray bottle, water, okay, and that's why I said use watercolour paper or something that can take the water. A couple of sprays on it, let it run about, and if it doesn't run about, okay, grab yourself, because sometimes the acetate that I use is a bit thick, uh, you know, just give it a squizzle about. And then you're just going to, remember, this one is the base layer, so you want most of the colour to be towards the outside. Because that way, you'll see it when you mess it up, when you put it all scruffy with the Distress Tool. Okay, so basically just popping it down wherever it lands. I've got some tissue to wipe off. There you go. There we are. Yeah, I was going to do either pink or purple. It's my go-to colours after, but when Brian said pink, I thought, yeah, I'll do pink. Why not? Why not? I think it'll look pretty in any colour to be fair, but may as well give somebody something they want, eh? So I'm going to put a bit more on here. I just want to see it really on the outside. I don't really mind what it looks like. You just want a bit of hint of that it's there, really. I'm going to put a bit of black on it as well. Or, well, by the time you water it down, it ends up grey, doesn't it? So same with this one. A bit more... A bit more um, bit more ink down on this one because this is the top layer and we want to actually see what we're doing with this we want to see it properly so I'll put a fair bit of water on this this card can take a lot of water so I'm going to put a big blob there and I'm going to squash it down and give it time to sit okay. <laughs> big pool of it and then I'm going to pop it back down again and just rub it in Any massive excess you've got on there, whip it off. Got some nice little spots on there. But don't forget, most of the stuff that you're putting on is going to be in the middle now. I'm just looking at the screen and this looks very pale. Well, we all know Kitsch Flamingo isn't that pale. It's a, it's a Barbie pink, really. It's, it's really pretty. So I'm just using up what's on there. I'm putting a little bit more interest on and then I'll dab off the pools because, after all, it's a background. And we don't want it to be too in your face. Okay, and then I'm just going to use my um, really bastard mixed media hairdryer. I hope you can still hear me. I just want to dry it off a little bit before I put the um, a bit of grey on it as well. You don't have to go, you know, it doesn't have to be too dry as long as it doesn't mix too much. There you go. Hi Sandy. You haven't missed much on all I've done is put a bit of ink on a bit of acetate and splodged it down on the two pieces of paper. So again now I'm going to clean this acetate off a little bit and just put a little bit of this black dye ink on. This is very juicy so I don't want too much really. That's probably a bit too much. So again, once you hit it with the, black, the water it kind of dilutes it quite well and goes grey. So that'll do. And now I just I don't I'm not gonna bother too much with that. I'll use what's left. I'm just gonna put some blobs on here just so we've got some grey. And if you if you find you put too much on, or if you don't like the way it looks, just give it a spray. 
let it wick out. It is a background, like I said. And sometimes you can get a bit too precious with the backgrounds. Just let it go where it wants to go. You know? We're just creating a bit of a palette for the for the rest of your stuff to sit on. And if you find once you get to putting your stuff on you haven't got enough, before you glue it down just and you're working your composition out, just put a bit more on. Barbie pink, yeah. Gotta love a bit of Barbie pink, can't you? Okay, so I think I might just put a little bit on the outside of there as well, why not? Got it, might as well. And then the whole thing will coordinate quite nice. I think, just on the outsides, like I said, because you're not going to see it much with this on. But you'll see maybe bits of it peeking out from behind. Um, behind it. There we are. I love this slapdash. <laughs> I love this slapdash crafting. It's quite fun. Okay. So, again, give it a little blast. Hiya, Joe. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is get my distressing tool and distress the edges quite roughly because I want it to look a bit messed up this is not the best noise in the world but there you go you can get these distressing tools everywhere this just happens to be a Tim Holtz one I've had it from when I very first started crafting and uh, it's never let me down, it's never gone blunt, but you can't, you know, they, when they first came out, they were quite expensive, but you can get them quite reasonably priced now. doesn't matter if you rip your paper, all adds to the, um, the look of it, the scruffy look. Okay. That's my excuse in case they go a bit too harsh and rip it. But there we are. So that's the first one done. And we are going to do the second one as well. So that's layer one done. Move that out of the way. Layer two. I do like doing uh, mixed media cards. I haven't done any for a while, but I'm, I'm steering towards them again. Um, and, and home decor three things, you know. <laughs> My next live I've prepped today. And that's going to be the canvas, so that's definitely a mixed media one. Although, it's not going to be on a hexagon shaped one like the last one. It's going to just be on a, a rectangle one. The hexagon one, my daughter, give me that one. So, um, I actually only give me one, so I have to do a different shape. So, it might be easier for you to find the rectangle ones anyway, might not, than the... The hexagon ones, if you want to cross along. When you get to the corner, you just scruff it up. Just scruff it up. I like a good scruffed edge. There we go. There we are. Right, so now we're going to do a little bit <coughs> of texture paste. Now, this this texture paste I've got here, um, I went to Glasgow with the girls um, to the craft show and it, it wasn't very good to be fair there wasn't much there so I um, we went and had a wander around and we found this shop called So Stream Green apparently it's like a, a Danish smaller Danish version of Ikea and it had loads and loads of craft stuff in and this was day cheap it was £4.56 and I thought well I'll get one to see what it's like Um and actually, it's not bad, but normally I make my own, okay? Um, and the recipe for making it is really, really, really easy. And if I can find it, I'll show you. Here it is, here it is. Okay, to make your own texture paste, you need cheap talc. You need cheap glue. And you need uh, white acrylic paint. 
Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which white acrylic paints. I've used both of these. This is a decent one. It's titanium white. And this is a cheap one from the works. Okay. But it makes a uh, really nice texture paste and it works just fine. And what you need is half a cup of talc, three tablespoons of PVA glue and two tablespoons of white acrylic paint. And you basically just mix it up, put it in something airtight and it works a treat. Okay. Now, if you double make it, make two lots of everything. Um, put one on one side, you know, Harvey. And then in the second one, you can add mica pigments. You can add white sand to make it sand paste. You can add a little tiny bit of acrylic um, coloured paint, you know, or mix it with the coloured paint to start with. Um, it's very difficult to mix it black because obviously with it going in white glue and all it goes grey. But you can also turn that mixture with added water to gesso, okay? Um, and and then you can you you can then get it as thick as you want it, you know. But what I'm going to do is use this because I have it saved me making any. And I'm going to grab Julie's stencil, and I'm going to use my favourite side, which is this side, okay? So I mean, this is quite thin. I might have to thicken this up with a bit of talc. Um, because I quite like my texture paste thicker than that, okay, um, which is why I like to make it myself. So I'm going to put some on randomly. I'm going to lean this edge against there so I don't get a harsh edge. And I'm just going to put a couple of patches, one there. I hope you can see this. And I don't mind if it's bumpy and lumpy. Because, like I said, it's mixed media and it's all texture. I'm going to put some here. Just three patches will do. Okay. And then I'm just going to, because this is a great and it's the same pattern every which way, I can turn it this way so that I don't lean on that there again that I've just put on. Now, unfortunately, because I've got texture paste on it, you're going to have to hear the hair dryer go until it's dry, but that's just the name of the game, really. So, just three patches. I don't know whether you can see that. I'll bring it up so you can see where I've put it. I'm just going to clean my spatula off. Put my texture paste away before I stick my elbow in it. And I'll slowly bring this up. I th and then I'll keep looking at the screen until I can see it. As you can see, there's one patch there. Shiny, there's one patch there and one patch there. Okay, so there we are. What am I looking for? That oh, hairdryer. So it might get a bit noisy for a little while, but I need this to be fairly dry before I go working on it again. So a bit of heat, but not too fast. This doesn't take long to dry, really. Yeah, Donna, I'll, when I put the picture up of this of this card, I might put it up later. Then what I'll do is I'll I'll put the recipe for it on there, and you can give it a go. I started making it because when I first got into mixed media, I thought to myself, well, what if I don't like it, and I, I spend all that money on all these products, and then they just sit there because I don't particularly like it, you know. So I thought, well, I'll have a go at making it myself. And I found the recipe, I think it was on Pinterest or YouTube or somewhere. And I gave it a go. And um, I just carried on making it. But what I tend to do is make, if I get an empty pot, a big empty pot, I'll make loads of it all at once as long as the pot's airtight. And then it, it lasts for ages. It really does. It lasts for ages. And it smells nice as well. <laughs> so... This is the only issue, isn't it, with uh, doing mixed media things. You've got to sit here and wait for it to dry. So has anybody got any questions so far? Do you make your own as well, Brian? I know you use a lot of that crafty items. But I wondered if you made your own as well. Because obviously when you're on a DT, you'll have to use their stuff, don't you? You know, and lucky, 
you get it off them. So it's really, you know, it's nice, nice to use. I mean, I was just penny pinching when I first started, to be fair. But you don't know what you're going to like. You don't know what you're going to carry on with. So, you know, give it a little try. We're getting there, we're getting there. The shine's gone off a lot of it. I'm not going to put any ink or anything over the top of it. So, you know, it doesn't need to be 100% dry for what I'm using now. You have in the past, yeah, I know you use that crafty. Still a big wet blob there that I put my finger in. Happy days. I do apologise, you literally uh, repeat the quantities for the texture paste, if they will do. It is half a cup of talcum powder, three tablespoons of PVA glue, and two tablespoons of white acrylic paint. That'll give you the small amount, which, as you know, it goes quite far, doesn't it, anyway? And you can add watercolour or acrylic or as was said mica, create most colours and textures you want. Yeah, instead of adding the white, make it with the colour of acrylic paint that you want to make. So, if, you know, if you, if you wanted blue texture paste, then use blue acrylic or make it white and paint it, you know. I think that's dry enough. That's dry enough for what we want. Okay, let me just... I've got my craft card on, so I'm completely covered in the uh, white, white texture paste now. I'm just going to give me um, stencil or white because I do not want my favourite stencil to be ruined with texture paste. That's the thing, you have to do that. You have to wash it, wipe it off straight away. I've got tissue and baby wipes that have been soaked in water next to me, ready to get it clean. And at the same time, I can clean my hands. Okay, so I'll give that a little more time to dry to make sure. And I'll bring in all the other stuff that I've got ready that we need. There's the frames there, cut in white. And I've got some flowers. Those ones have been done. So I'm not sure how many I'm going to use. So I'll colour them all up just, just in case. These leaves, I'm not going to colour. I'm going to keep them as they are. I pulled that out as well because I particularly like that. And some of the little ones. And that is one of the foilables, which I'm not going to foil. And I've got some little ones. This is just to work out composition-wise what I'm going to do with it. So, as you can see, I've only used one colour ink apart from the, um, the black. So I'm going to keep it with one colour. And I'm going to do my usual... Lazy Tracy way of adding colour to the flowers. I just dip it in and add it to the middle, basically. If you wanted to, you could wick it out, straight out, further out. But I'm quite happy with it just being in the middle. Have I done all those? Right, they're done. Put a bit in the middle of these. So basically, when you do this, the, all that's going to pop off colour-wise is the flowers. I'm just going to sort of, everything's a muted background, so let's just colour them and make them up. Glue is what we need for that. So, and I've got that one as well, that's done. I'm not going to go too much on the, um, you know, you can get your ball tools out and all that if you wish. I'm just going to layer it up and then I have a cabochon for the centre. Now when I'm putting the cabochons on I like to use um, a bit of glossy accents. This is a studio lights version. Okay, 
it's not clear like the glossy accent ones are but it dries clear so you don't need much if you just put a little just squeezed it and that one come on. If you just put a little blob in the centre run it round and I'm going to pop it in there and then what I like to do is give it a squish with my finger and it grabs quicker as you can see and becomes clear don't know whether that's what you're meant to do but <laughs> grabs quicker and falls off there you go if you give it a little run round with your finger it sticks in the centre and then you're able to leave it to one side to proper dry uh, just layer these up one on top of the other offset the petals and then they can be drying while we get the rest of the card ready okay petal offset, I love these big flowers, I do like a statement flower I didn't snip and I've also want you to snip in between the petals and then that will give you just that little bit more dimension I use the dies to cut some of them out well actually no that's a lie I use the dies to cut all of them out and then went round some of them with um, with the scissors to snip off the white bits just to make it look a bit different on some of them and on the rest I left it so we need to do the little one no I'll leave the little ones separate so I can tuck them in the end. I should have enough on there to put on that. Yes, I have. So, that one's on there. That one's on there. Put them away. Right. I shall have to have some glossies. I didn't get them out. That's wrong, isn't it? I need some pink glossies. Me thinks. Nice bright pink, why not? In the centres of them. I'll put them in the big ones because I know I'm going to use them. I'm not sure on the others what I'm going to use, so I won't waste me, me glossies just yet. I don't know whether it's better to not have nails or to have nails. There they are. I know I'm going to use them too, so I'll pop the I'll pop some on there. And then I'll wait and see what other ones I'm going to use. There we are. Okay. So, pop them to one side. See where we're going with this now. Okay, so I want to put some... Still feels a bit wet. I want to put some... Um, lace. Some lace across there. So, you can either... Glue it or use double sided tape. Now, I'm going to use double sided tape and show you the wee trick. Um, I'll do it from that side on here. Show you a bit of a trick. Try not to press hard just in case this is still wet. And I need a pokey tool now. Oh my god, not having organised tonight, am I? Here we are, pokey tool gotten. Oh, this this thing. Oh, it's an Alta new one. I've had it years. Um. Yeah, it's okay. It's just got a brush on the end. It's all right. It's good for little small things like this. So let's see how long we're going to put with that. This lace is just a little bit of something extra in the background. So on we go. With that. And then I'm going to put a piece from this side across as well. On there. And hope that we're dry enough there we go so let's measure that put a piece on there you know to cut off what you don't need right that's not very straight so cut it straight so i lay it onto the double sided tape now i'm going to lay it through the middle i know you can see there's a there's a strip there my double sided tape is slightly wider than that strip okay so obviously that means there's some sticky either side of it and we don't want that. We don't want the sticky. So what I tend to do is, and that's a bit long. See, you can hear it on my finger. That one's a bit long. So I'm going to trim it off at an angle. 
So what I tend to do is get a little bit of talc. It's way too much talc. And I've got a nice soft brush. I just pick a bit of talc up. And if you dust it along there, it takes that sticky off. Obviously, you're not going to do this on white card, air eh, black card. It just removes the sticky. Well, that's what I do. I don't know whether you do that. <laughs> Hi, Karen. It's okay, doll. We haven't done the, the other bit of card yet. Don't worry. I was keeping it from last to last. Just wipe this talc away. I'll get it everywhere. There we go. And it makes your card smell nice. Smell like babies. Right, so... No sticky now. Hold it down, give it a dust off. So now comes the fun part, the best part of it for me. I, I prefer this part to everything. Putting it all together. Okay, so we start off with some circles. And they can be as big or as small as you like. So I may go with one big, one small. Like this. This is how you work out. I'm just going to put my glue gun in while I'm here. Because I think I want to put the stuff on with hot glue today. Right. Okay. So. Am I central? Yeah. They're going on there. Um, then get your biggest flower. And decide which one's your biggest flower. Obviously this is mine. It's gone and stuck now and it's not quite in the centre. Hey ho. It is only like glass, so when you look at the pictures, don't look too close, guys. Okay, so composition workout, that's going there. But we will need some of these little darlings. One at the top. I always image what's at the top has got to be at the bottom. Okay, so... I might move that over a bit. These are all the things you can work out before you glue it down. Okay. So let's see what else we have. I've got this large one. Yep, I might shove that under there. And in that case, this needs to come out a bit further. See what I mean about working out your composition? You can always take a photo of it on your phone when you get it where you want it to move it off, obviously, to... Um, to stick it all down. I want one of these up here, I think. I think that was what was on the last one. We shall soon find out when we take the pictures. I'm going to put that one down here, but this time I'm going to put the right colour glossy on it because I put the wrong colour on it now. Which is annoying. There it is. There we are. It's from the party mix, I think. Yeah. If it's not, I'll work it out and put the right one on. It's got to be the right one, hasn't it? Is that it? No, there's like just a, a tiny, tiny difference in them. There it is. Tiny, tiny difference in the colours, which is fab. But I want to make sure to get the right one on. There you go. I don't think it is, but there you are. I'll check it later. Okay, so this one is going to go under there. All right. And then we're going to start popping these leaves on. Might not leave all the um, all the sticks you know, all the stems off them. But I did cut quite a lot of these out. And I thought, well, whatever I don't use, I can use again. On a, on a card. I'm sure to use them on a card. So, cut off the leaves. Pop them under where you want them. You can tuck them in a bit tighter, if you wish, when you glue them down. So I just want to fill it with leaves, really, because they're pretty. There we go. You can even cut them shorter than that and take the leaf off, but I'm not going to do so for tonight. I'll keep them separate. Right, well I will with that one because I don't want that one too big. That one's just going to come there. Okay. And this one, I think I'll just use that one, trim into it. I'll put that one maybe up here. Yeah, that looks okay. So I've got these as well. I'm going to work out whether, I don't think I need that one, it's a bit big. I like this, so that button's going to go around about there. So when I glue it down, make sure it's underneath and this is pulled up a bit more. 
and then I'll have a look at it and I'll see if it needs any more leaves and I'll see if it needs um, any of these little ones putting in. Okay, so I've roughly got an idea where to go and I can take the big ones off. I can start putting these down now. She says, yeah, it's working. My glue gun's on and it's running. So keep it handy as to where it's going. That's going down there. So there's your start for 10. Your starter for 10. That one's going to go in there and that will hold the leaf in place. Then I'm going to put my big one in. And lift up. I think I'll have that tucked behind. So pop that one down. And then not hot glue this because I, want to, I might need to move it a little bit. So I'm just going to pop this one in here underneath it. I might need to shift the angle of it a little bit, so I'm going to, I'm going to use the wet glue. There we are. Pop it down under there, because we've got this. I don't know which one to use. I think I'll use that one. I quite like that one. I quite like all of them, to be fair. I wish I had a bigger one now, now I could have put them all on. But I'll use them up and make a different card. I think and nothing will go to waste. Lift up some of them, pop it in. Okay, now you've just got to deal with the, the rest of these leaves now. Put them down. Now everything, you notice I didn't stick down the, um, the circles, didn't need to do that because the circles are being held down by the hot glue that went on the flowers and on this as well. So let's see. Here it goes. You can use uh, the medium, the you know, the gel medium for this. The only issue I have with the gel medium is that you have to wait for this to dry. I can't be doing with that, I haven't got time for that. So I think I'm gonna pop that one under there for now. I've got to tuck some more leaves in, maybe. And I have got a few more flowers that I can use as well. I'm going to trim that one off because it's a little bit long, longer than I need. There we go. Pop it in. Group your, group your items. It always looks nicer when your items are grouped together. I've got a space there. So I might trim off one of these and pop that in. Trim it into two and a one, you can see. Because you can always tuck them in. It just gives it a little bit more interest underneath. If you pop, yeah, I like that. So that's going in there. And then I'm gonna put the leaves underneath it coming out, I think. Take one off. Do anybody else do this? Change their mind every five minutes? Yeah. That's better. It's nice and full there now. You've got more flowers, so I'll need a couple of glosses on that. And this one I've just trimmed off. I can put next to it. Yeah. There we go. So, have a look. I think I quite like these two. So I might use these and all. Put that under there. You can use foam pads and all to give it different dimensions if you want to. Pop her there. That's it, just fills that spot. Paint everywhere. And let me see. So I'm going to bring my brush in and I give this a bit of colour on the outside. Okay, it's wet there, that's why. A little bit of colour on it. You can colour it all over if you wish. It's just going to make it stand out from the background a little. Using the same one colour that we've used all the way through. So that one says it's your birthday. And this one says enjoy your special day. We'll have both. Why not? We'll have both of them. Just a little bit of pink around the edge. 
There we go. I think I, think I had hello and a uh, hello I wanted to say on the last lot, but we shall see what this looks like. So it's your birthday. So now it comes to the bit where I mess about so much where to put these. I quite like that there. It could have been down here. Could have been all over the place. But I quite like it where it is. And then I'm going to have a good look at it. And see if I need anything else on it. So I'm keeping these flat. Because I've got enough dimension. When this dries I'll pull the, uh, this, the petals up. And then you'll be able to see it properly. So tuck that in. And make sure it's straight. You can still see the nice um, lace there behind it, so that's good. It's your birthday. Enjoy your special day. Why not? So, let's see. Thank you, Julie. Yep, it'll be grand when all the petals are pulled up because they're all double. So, now bring in your card base. That's if you can find it. There we are. And we want the first layer down first. Decide which way up you want it. I'm only putting it here because I'm only putting glue, not right on the edge, because I'm going to see how far this this uh, distressed bit is sticking up once I put this other one on. I might need to pull it back and curl it a little bit more. So I've got the fold to the left hand side, but you could have it at the top, it doesn't matter. So I press that down and then I can, you can always manoeuvre this a bit more so it's got some dimension. And then that can go on, on the top of there. <laughs> Let's hope nothing falls off. There we are. And that can go on top. You can clearly see that there's two level of distress, so that's good. I don't need to go in any further. There we are. The joys of not waiting for it to dry. There we go. So that's that. But I'm still going to put a few extra little sparkly bits on. For somebody who likes mixed media, I cannot bear dirt on my hands. It's awful. Right. I brought these in. Let's move all this out of the way. I am going to make a card with that. I'll tell you what I could have used as well, but I think it's the wrong pink. It's the wrong pink colour. I could have took that in. Or any of any of your, you know, your bits that you've got, your um, clay pieces that you've made, or any of those things. Tuck them all in. Give it some interest, some added interest, you know. But don't take away from the main focus of the flowers. The flowers are the main hit. So, you know, I am... I don't want to take away from that. So I've got some little iridescent sequins. I've got some little pink, um, I don't know where I got these from, sparkles. But they seem to be the exact pink, which is <laughs> an absolute bonus. So I'm going to just dot a few of them around. Five, maybe. Yeah, they stand out well. And if this is still wet, I can embed one in there. Happy days. Five will do. Okay, so I'll just need to glue them on. Now these, although these uh, sequins are iridescent, okay, they kind of pick up whatever colour is is on your on your project. Now it's stuck to my finger. There we are. So if I put the, those little sequins on, then I'm going to get a little bit of pink come through them as well. Which might be nice, or it might be too much with because I've got these pink ones on. You don't never ever know until you stick them on and give it a go. There we are. One more, just in case that doesn't stick down. I shall give it a welly with a bit of glue. These are actually pointy, so it's it's you know it's not easy to stick them down. To be fair, I didn't realise they were pointy. These also are quite nice as well. These are little glass cabochons, so if you've got a, you know, you can pop a bit, bit of interest in on them as well. A couple of cabochons maybe, because then that'll echo the centre of your flower there. 
maybe put three of those on. I might even put the, the sequins on as well. Because it'll all catch the sparkly light, won't it? So I've got some different sized ones in here, but I think I've gone with two mediums and a large. It's too large. I'm not into that. Put a small one there. There we go. Let's check out these sequins. Just be a couple of, I think. Overkill. Why not? So I'm just going to put three of them on as well because I can. On there. Yeah, and they do pick up um, the pink, which is great. One, two, three. There we are. My glossies live to face another day. There we are. Three of them, two. So that is it, almost, almost. But today, when I put the card on, Karen Owens asked me, would I maybe show her how to do the background? So seeing as I'm all messy now, I might as well get some more ink on my fingers. So I'll shove all this out of the way and I'll bring in the stuff to, to do the background like the card I did today so for this one i can do two different types really i'm just going to move this one out of the way so it doesn't get covered and bring in my scoreboard okay and the inks required so for the first one i've got for this one i've got lost shadow okay because i think that's all i used on the one i did today so i've got it's for a DL card, and obviously a DL card measures four by eight and a quarter. So I've done this at three and three quarters by eight, okay. And I turned it long side up, and I scored at every inch, all the way down, all the way across, okay. That's all I did. So you can do them as near or as far apart from each other as you want, really. Now, this Lost Shadow was really, really quite a juicy ink pad, so you've just got to be careful. Um, I'm just wondering if my hickory smoke one might be better. If I can find it, that is. No, I'm not going to find it. So I'll use this one, and I'll just go gentle. Okay, so all I did to, to make this one today was angle the ink pad. Don't put it flat down, or all you'll get is a square angle it and just drag it from the top down i usually sort of trail upwards towards me about halfway okay turn it around and do the same from the other side right so you get that kind of weathery look now if you find you haven't picked up the score lines then you can bend your score lines and just run your ink pad across them and that makes it stand out even more. It's not too bad when you're doing just one colour because you usually can pick it up if it's one colour on white. Now I use, uh, I've used grey on this because my, my flowers were pink and grey on the card today but if you use greens and blues and do it on white cards you get a sort of weathered beach look and basically that is all I did. I mean that is that was all I did and that was enough for me for a background for a card okay but i want to show you how to get the woody look as well while i'm here mice as well but you haven't been on an hour whatever so that's that one and then of course using the flowers that you didn't use uh today that i didn't use today you could put them on this one in much the same way as i did with the other one use your um, leaves that you didn't use this is why I never mind doing too much in the way of you know you could even put two of those on cut it off at that side um, and use these flowers that I didn't use and then it wouldn't be too dissimilar to the card that we did that I put on today another quick one to be fair it's a quick card Completely quick card. Sentiment on there, cut that off there. Jobs are good, isn't it? 
Right, now I'm going to do the brown version because this is my favourite one to do because it's an absolute bonus for men's cards when you haven't got anything for the background. So this one's craft card. Um, and it's one of them craft cards that only has the nice colour on one side which is kind of annoying. So do your scoring from the side that you don't like and then, then the bumps will be on the side that you do like. Um, I'm going to do vertical for this one. Uh, I'll do it every inch. You can do it every half inch. Depends on how close together you want your planks, really. Um, three, four, and then at five. This is just a random piece of card that I had cut already. I think it's it would go on a folded A4 card, you know. So you can see the score lines, but you can't really. They're not really coming up that much. So I do like to give these a good bend. You can always flatten it out again. No problem, but if they stick up nicely, they catch the ink nicely. So there we are. So with this one, I start off pale. Okay, and this is antique linen. Doesn't give it much, but it gives us something. Again, angle your angle your ink pad and drag it towards you. Don't try and do it all in one go. Do half, if you, or even a third. I don't know. Oh, you can see it nicely on camera. Okay. Turn it round. And it's good to keep your old battered ink pads for this, you know, because you don't want too much ink on it. And you don't want it to pop up everywhere. You don't want a complete coverage. You just want it here and there. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with a bit of maybe gathered twig, I think. So pull it down from the top. And this is where your planks start to pick up the colour now. That was, that was lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> Dropped it. Um, and then, go again if you want. Um, this one's Vintage Photo. This has got more of a, a sort of orangey, reddy brown, this one. And then if you want to go even darker, then you can hit it with some ground espresso. This might be a bit too much, but hey no it's not too bad and if you find that you've you've gone you haven't got enough of it in the middle well you can just go back in and if you've got too much brown dark brown you can go back in with your antique linen again and take take it down a bit okay but if you really want to emphasize them planks take one of your lighter browns fold your plank as you did before when you scored them and just run your in pad along it okay there you go what could be easier than that and when it dries obviously it looks all wet and thingy now um once it dries that'll be a great background for a bloke i mean you can get clever about it if you're any good with a with a um you know with a brown pen you can draw knots in the wood and all but i always find because when you're doing something like this, you're putting most of your embellishments on the middle, so, you know, you only really need it around the outside. You put a bit of green on this as well and make it look mouldy, like verdigris, as if, uh, you know, the weather's gotten to it. So, there we are. I hope that was okay for you, Karen. It's not difficult, it's not too difficult to do. I'm just cleaning my fingers so I can bring this um, card back in. So, shift that out of the way. Put the card back in the centre so Julia's got a half decent picture. Actually, move this out of the way, put it there, so that she can catch it on the live. There we go. Right, so the only thing I've got to do now is reel off all the fabulous stockists that you can get your Julie Hickey design stuff from, and that's Dragon's Paper Craft. Wow and Boss and Powder UK, Let's Craft, oh no, sorry, Let's Create, Amelia's Creative Crafts, and Maximum Crafts, Craft Bliss, and the new one, which is in Two Craft, uh, Forget Me Not Craft Cabin, The Mulberry Bush, The Art of Crafts, Hixie Soft Crafts, Craft Stash, and in America you can get it from si Simon Says Stamp, and in Australia you can get it from J Craft. Um, Hazel's still got a online 
um, bag and matching cards with workshop and you can find that via a shop's website and of course there's always Pinterest and Julie's YouTube channel um, and the crafty friends of Julie Hicker Designs group to get any inspiration that you need and then you've got Philippa back on Tuesday with Technique Tuesday and then I'll be back on the 12th, I think it's the 12th, yeah, the 12th with a mixed media live canvas, the canvas that I did for the sample. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have a go. And if you do, tag me so I can see it and put your photos on on the uh, Crafty Friends of Julie Hickey group. Okay, thanks for joining me, girls and boys. And I shall see you tomorrow online when I put my photograph up, if I don't do it tonight. Okay, good evening.